Now, I'm going to be tying a snake. Now, this is a, it's a basically they're very popular flies. Uh, I get asked, I get asked a lot to tie these, and recently I asked on my Facebook page what fly would you like to see from the full mill catalogue, and this is one of the flies. Now, you can have it with the green eyes. Uh, normally, they'd sell it with the, the silver eyes, but it's up to yourself whether you use it with the green eyes or the silver eyes. And the other thing you can do, in this case you can see at the front hook I've, I've not taken away the bend. Normally or some people like to take the bend away and just have the trailing hook at the back. So, but at this, I'm just keeping it whole at this point but you can always have the option of just nipping off the bend of the hook. But it's quite an easy enough fly to tie, it's just a bit fiddly at times but anyway, I'll show you how to tie it. Now the braid I'm using, it's just a backing braid that you get for your fly reel. The bit they're running the, the line you put on, so if the fish takes you out, you'll get the, the back in there to obviously, hopefully land the fish. Now this is a white braid. Now what I've done here is I've run the wax through it. Much easier if you run the wax through it and then on your fingers. It basically it holds it together a bit better, especially when you're working with it. Doesn't free as easy. Uh, if you if you don't do it, like I'm going to attach the hook. This is not get any wax on it, and you put this through. See, it starts to free. You spend more time trying to miss. I get around about the the frayed ends. Whereas if you wax it, it stays together much better. I mean, you get more control of what you're doing. But the first thing I do is it's a size eight hook. You're looking for a strong hook. It could be. a Barbless, it could be it could, uh, one of the flies that I use the grub shape hook, so it's up to yourself. Now, there's the end of the braid, and this is about maybe eight inches or so at this point. Now, I put this point into the, the braid. I'm just going to come in so I can see what I'm doing. The cut end, or the end facing forward of the eye, the longer part is at the back. And then you basically push the hook through. You just got to take your time when you do this. You can open out the braid itself, pushing the hook through. Just take your time. Now I'm looking at least right about the say to the between the point and the eye of the hook. So we just take our time, working our way around. Just got to be patient. I sit and make these up first before I tie the flies. So I would have a dozen or so made up, and then I would start tying them. So we quick check the length. So you touch more. Now, once you get enough on, just bring the pointer hook through the braid, and then what you do is you get the other end, and through the underside the hook, bring it through, now usually back into the vise, now obviously you want that on the underside, just slide this up, nice and tight, once you don't pull it through the space in the eye, just at this point, so just make sure it's nice and tight, and with the wax it gives it a lot of grip, then what I do is, Trim it at the back, and then I come on with my thread. Now length, I don't need as much as that. Trim some of that away, and then you can join the thread. You could use, I mean, just I use just a normal thread. I mean, I've tied lots of these over the years, and I've never had any issue with these coming away. So just on the top here with the thread, and then you wind down, tying this on, nice and tight. Gives you a better connection. This will never come out. There it will. Uh, the hook would break first. Now what I'm getting to this point here, I'm just going to free it a wee bit. So one in line with the. I'll just to taper off a wee bit. So I'm just going to fluff it out. Take away the white. Just 
after you're timing you're doing this. Leave a wax on my thread. See how it's going. Then when you tie in or tie on the rabbit at this point, I've got a strip of rabbit. This is his onker. Now what I've done here is I've obviously I've tapered it slightly. Now one a tail just at the back. Now you round about maybe an inch coming over the back and then you make a space for your thread to come in and catch it in. Best to moisten your fingers to control the, the rabbit. So you come in nice and tight. Now make sure you're waxed, your thread's nice and waxed so that you get plenty of grip. Now I like to what I then do is just get some either varnish or super glue onto the thread and then tie it so it's nice and tight usually give it a second or so so that it dries that's fine because you don't want it, if you pull this back it will stick to it so I'm just going to make sure that it's dry and it's fine then lift this to the back, lift your rabbit to the back, then the thread to the front. Now this is just the same as just the rabbit, some bits coming off of cut ends that I've got, just using that as a dubbing. Now when I've tied these, I've tried to keep them as slim as possible, so I don't want them too bulky. You could put lots of materials on the body, on the, sh the shank, it's up to yourself, but I basically just keep it the same colour as the rabbit, so and then you wind up. Rabbit dub's dead easy, so a bit more. Now, best is to secure this on. So again, we pull the rabbit over. Make a space for your thread. A bit of moisture in your fingers just to dampen down the rabbit so you can control it a bit better. Yeah, just make a quick look, see how things are sitting. That looks okay. Nice and tight. Now I'm going to put a wee tiny bit of dub in here just to tidy that area up. Some more of the rabbit anyway. Then lift the rabbit back up. And I'm just going to tie off at the front, just as I would tie off at a finish off a fly. Now I'm just going to whip finish by hand, make it easier so I can basically pull the braid out of the way. And then come in, tighten up. Trim that away. Now that's the back of the back of the, the snake tied up, so I'm just going to velcro the rabbit to make it blend a wee bit better into the, the dressing. There we are. Just going to put a wee tiny bit of varnish into this area. Just to tighten up the knot. Just a standard clear varnish. And there we are, that's the back of the, the snake died. The length, now that, 10 centimetres is about the kind of normal. So if you're looking for 10 centimetres, just get your ruler and then come in. There's your measure there. This is where you want to tie in, so this is where you're going to put your. The second hook should be there. I'm just going to mark it with a pen. It's got a sharpie pen here. Just mark it there. And then basically we can take this off, ready for making the front of the fly. Using the same hook. 
into your vise. Make sure the shank's straight. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is put some thread down. I'll be, I just want a layer of thread. There's a couple again, there's two or three ways you could actually tie the, the braid on. So I'll take it down to the point of the hook. Then come back up. Now what I'm going to do here, to save this, catch my finger, it's important that you be careful at this point. Just get a wee bit of foam here. So I'm going to put the, the back hook into the foam. So that if you when you, you forget because you'll draw your fingers through, I do it, and you'll drag your fingers this way, you'll stop basically hooking yourself up. Now there's a red mark there. Take my thread up, put the braid through, through from the top here, it's starting to fluff out. I see you run the wax through, that'll help control it. So I'm well, just going to strain up a wee bit. Always give yourself a good couple of inches or so to work with in case you make a mistake. So it's through the eye. There's the red mark, it's just my measure. And then just fold this back. So it's through the eye and you're folding it both back. Get the length first before we can go any further. Just check with length. The oven's fine. There's the full length of the fly. It's fine. I can just lay that towards the back. And I can trim this away. Tie this down nice and tight. It's the easiest way to do it. Uh, don't need any notes. This will, I mean, the hook will break first before this pulls out. That point there. Then what we want to do is get some flash. I'm just using a mobile flash. This is gold and silver. This one gives pearl. You can there's many colours you can mix. This is a good colour blend. Uh, the gold and the silver. Don't be shy with the flash. Look in the length. Just towards the back of the for the hook here, trailing hook. I'm just going to catch it on my side and then fold it down the other side. But I'm going to wind, wind up. It's well tied in, and it's not going to pull out either because when you fold it back down your side, trim it the right length, which is there. See where we are. Again, we can tidy up. Now we're ready to bring over the rabbit. Now it's important that this is tight. And you tie this on loose so that the pressure goes onto the braid and not onto the rabbit skin. So you want it basically so when this is tight, the rabbit skin's still loose. So there it's there. Make a space for it. But we always check but once you tie it on that it's the right length. Just come in, make sure there's a few turned there. And then check check the braid, see there's a bit of play in the the rabbit so there's not too much. So just tighten it up a wee bit. There we go. Moisten the rabbit out of the way. A few turns in there. Now again I'm gonna put some super glue and varnish or so if you want. Go into the thread. So I'll seal it up. Give it a second to dry. And what I'm going to do here is just put a tiny bit of dubbing over the top of that and then start to come up. This will tidy it up at the back. So I'm using the, the rabbit dubbing again. Lift the, the rabbit up and then start to wind up towards the Towards the height. It's 
Just making a nice body of the, the rabbit. And then we can put the eyes on. Now give your cell a good 5mm or so from the eye. Now before I go any further, I'm just going to help you some of the rabbit back. Now, if you want the fly to sit upright like this, you have to tie the beads on the underside. This is just chain bead painted chartreuse. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to catch it underneath so I want the fly to sit upright with the hooks pointing down. But it's a, it basically, if you tie the chain on the top, it'll flip the fly upside down. And all I'm doing here is figure eight through between the eyes. You can use dumbbell eyes, you can use lots of materials, lots of different types to weight the fly. And just, as I say, figure eight through it, get a nice balance, nice and tight. Make sure it's nice and strong. Now, this pay. We touch a super glue just in this area here. This will basically hold it tight. And then again, work the thread through. Plenty of turns in. Now, once we have obviously figured out fly on, we can bring over the rabbit. Now, I'm going to just lay it on the top and then catch it nice and tight. On top, just making sure it's sitting the way you want, and then we can remove the waste. Come straight cut across the top. This is what I would probably use for the dubbing. I'll trim that for the body. It would be nice and clean up here, so I'm just going to trim away the edges of the, the skin of the rabbit, and then figure it through nice and tight. This will help hold the eyes as well. Now to tidy this up, what I'm going to use is some, this is black blister. Now, this one is from Venice. You could use many flashes, you could use whatever you like. You could use a rabbit as well. Finish off with that, it's up to yourself. Finish it off just by tidying the area up. Make sure you've got enough at the back. And then, like, figure eight through with the dubbing, but thin it out when you do that, so you don't fill up the eye. Yeah, that's fine, take away the excess. Just draw this back. Then we can work finish. Now, basically make sure that the hooks that you use have a decent size eye, uh, so that you don't fill the eye up. Like in these hooks, I can get the braid through the eye, and there's no issue with it. There's plenty of space. Uh, basically, then what I like to do is I'm just going to curl the braid up a wee bit with a black pen. There you go. Got a varnish. Well, in this case, what I'm going to do is we touch a super glue, top and bottom. Allow that to dry and then just finish off with a coat of varnish. And there we are. I mean, there's the snake, or one of the many versions anyway. I'll take away that foam so that you can see it. Uh, you can bring out some of the, the flash with a bit of Velcro. Top and bottom. And there you are. It is a bit of a fiddle to tie a wee bit, but it's. It's okay, once you get into tying a few, you shouldn't have any problems. And this is, it moves extremely well in the water. Uh, it's very enticing to a fish. Many type of fish means for sea trout it would be great. There is a sea trout version, it's more hair. And it's tied on a braid. Uh, and I will be filming it in some time, and I'll let you see that as well. Uh, once the say, super glue is dry, we can then come in with a wee touch of varnish. Mm.